Forget gurus. Forget anyone claiming to be an online business expert without going through the challenges of entrepreneurship themselves. The Real Money, Real Business podcast is here to prove the best insights in online business comes from your fellow online business builders. We dig into stories of entrepreneurs selling their business on the Empire Flippers marketplace so that you can learn how they made their business profitable, how they overcame obstacles, and what lessons they learned in their online journey. If you want to take your business and your knowledge to the next level, you've come to the right podcast. Let's get started. Hey, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Real Money, Real Business podcast. We record these interviews so potential buyers have more information about the seller and the business to help them make a buying decision. Before we dive in, let's go over a brief summary of this business. It's an Amazon Associates display advertising and affiliate business created in February of 2017 in the food and beverages niche. The average monthly revenue for the business is $7,487 and makes an average of $7,386 per month in net profit. The assets included in the sale are the primary domain and all site content and files, social media pages and accounts, which include Facebook, Pinterest, and Instagram. And just as a disclaimer, this site is built on Webflow, not on WordPress. So for everyone listening, you can visit empireflippers.com slash marketplace and search for listing 62167 to learn more about the business, or you can unlock this listing to start your due diligence if you're interested in purchasing this asset. So that's a brief overview of the business for sale. Let's hear from the seller with me today. Welcome to the show, Brian. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. Thanks a lot for having me, Nick. Absolutely. Well, I'm looking forward to learning more about you and your business. So to start us off, Brian, can you tell us a little bit about your background in building and running online businesses? Yeah. So as you mentioned, this site was built in February of 2017. I actually built my first website back in 2009. I didn't really know what I was doing at the time, which is funny, just kind of a hobby blog type thing, but it took off. So from 2009 to 2016, I ran this baseball blog. I'm a big fantasy baseball guy at the time, not so much these days, because who has time for that everyday commitment. (laughs) But it ended up doing at its peak towards the end about 2 million page views a year and about a million sessions a year, which I was astounded by that level of success, because it was completely content driven, there was very little promotional effort. And I had no idea what SEO really was. So anyway, like 2016, I ended up transitioning away from that because it was just a hobby blog that didn't really make much money, maybe a few thousand bucks a year or something with me and my buddy got a job kind of health system as data analyst, my first real like relatively high paying big boy job and did that for about six months before I kind of got the itch to be doing more website stuff again. I hadn't been publishing for that entire time. And that's when I kind of decided to take the leap and build this affiliate content marketing display ad site. And well, I guess here we are five years later and I'm looking to offload to somebody who will care just as much as I did. Yeah, that's awesome. And I love hearing the stories about, like, I think right now, there's a ton of information about SEO, content marketing, hiring out for producing content, web design. And I think it can almost be counterproductive in the sense of, like, there's so much information and people just don't build. So to hear that you just built both of your sites, maybe without knowing all of the information in advance about SEO, that's great to hear. And congratulations on being listed here for sale. Yeah, thank you very much. So why now are you deciding to sell this business instead of keeping it and growing it? Well, let me tell you, as my first real successful online venture, uh, at least monetarily, it's really bittersweet getting rid of it. And, you know, full disclosure, I don't entirely want to. But that said, I'm in my mid 30s. I have a wife and two rescue dogs and my rescue dogs don't really like other dogs too much. So we need to have a place to live that has some land and some space. So I'm looking to sell this site and use the money from it to be kind of our down payment for the home of our dreams moving forward. Awesome. The rescue dogs getting you to sell the site. (laughs) I know, right? Like they say, dogs are expensive, but a rescue is only like a hundred bucks for this thing, but it's costing me my website. So, (laughs) Well, maybe this will be a blessing in disguise and I definitely hope it is. So you certainly have grown this business to become a successful six-figure website. So through this journey, what did you learn from building this that just seemed to work for you? Well, you know, you kind of just touched on it a little bit, but kind of that SEO perspective, you always hear people saying, you know, niche selection, keyword research, 
this technique, that strategy, whatever, use tools like Ahrefs or SEM Rush or all that stuff. But there's a lot that kind of just gets glossed over, I suppose, or a lot that's lost when you go with too much of that data and tool formulaic approach. I learned, I shouldn't say very late to the game, but you know, a couple of years into running this website, that the money I was really making was from product reviews. And I had avoided doing product reviews for so long. I was mostly sticking to like product A versus product B, like comparison type stuff, or best this or best that. And I was kind of hitting that wall of like, man, I've written like 150 of these articles. What else can I write? Because I was running out of things that like Ahrefs was telling me had volume. And then I just decided one day to say, screw it, and committed to doing a bunch of product reviews on things that had like, zero to 10 volume according to the tools and the site like exploded after that and what i've learned is that you know those tools you know they have really good spiders and scrapers and all that stuff they estimate traffic really well but when you've got like you know this isn't the coffee niche when you've got like keurig elite or whatever coffee maker and you got that review keurig elite review you're going to pull in traffic from all these other things that you don't even expect to and it's just people get too caught up on those tools and those traffic estimates and keyword research and all that stuff. And I really have just sort of figured out, just find the products that you want to promote that are popular in your niche, assuming you've evaluated your niche properly and just write about them and go for it. And if it's good, the traffic will come. Nice. That's awesome. And to the point about you choosing to write about topics that show very little or maybe no traffic volume on tools like Ahrefs. I was having a conversation about this with the director of marketing here and about this very technique that if it's even appearing in Ahrefs, even if it's showing through the tool that there's zero volume, the fact that it's appearing means that people are searching for this on Google because it's coming up as a search term. So yeah, I think it's a good point to not always choose your growth strategy or I guess to be deterred by writing about certain things just because a tool says something about the volume. So was there anything you tried with this business that didn't work out as well? Yeah. So along the same lines, you know, I get really tired. In fact, I actually don't write a ton of best review stuff. So aside from product reviews, you know, I like to think of other sometimes creative ways to create content. As an example, one time on a site, I tried to create this business listings directory, which is sort of like, you know, if you were to Google, like, I don't know, pretending this isn't like the nursery niche or something like that. If you were to Google like plant nursery near you and there'd be a business that would come up. I created listings for all these businesses and I did something similar on this coffee site. And I picked up a decent amount of traffic that would come through, you know, people searching for these businesses, but the traffic ended up being pretty low value, just because once I got them to the page, I couldn't really get them to do anything of value. A business listing doesn't have a lot of length to it. So there's not a lot of ad revenue to be generated. People are searching for a business, therefore, they're not really searching for a product. So I had this idea of like, maybe I can promote, you know, if somebody is searching for on this site in particular, if somebody's searching for like a coffee roaster, for example, maybe I can get them to buy like a coffee subscription box or something like that. So I put a CTA on the page and it didn't really convert super well. I still think that there's something to the idea, but I haven't figured out, I guess, the right offer or the right text yet. So, you know, effort put in that didn't really yield a ton, but you know, you live and learn. Yeah. So actually to that point about you driving traffic that seems relevant, but doesn't convert in the way that you need it to in order to generate revenue. I know we talked a little bit before this interview about how traffic is generated. Did you want to talk about that here? Yeah, sure. I think it's obviously germane to any conversation about website stuff is how do people find the site. So this site, it's on the listing if you choose to unlock it, which I recommend that you do. It's a 94% organic smattering of a little bit of social and stuff, but it's pretty much an all organic search site, 69% from the US and 85% from the US, UK and Canada. So a pretty high value, you know, set of visitors that come in, which is obviously great for me and for whoever takes over for me. Yep, definitely. Cool. So It's been a few years. It sounds like you were in maintenance mode for this business. So can you describe the amount and the type of work that you do on this business for maintenance? Yeah, man, it's going to come off as like almost unbelievable. I don't do anything. I last added 
I think like 38 product reviews, which sounds like more work than it is because of the way that the site's designed. But I added about 38 product reviews in September, October, and November of 2021. So this was this July. So that was like seven, eight months ago or something like that. Since then, I have not put more than maybe two hours into the site. And those two hours, I think, are just when I see something that I just feel like editing a layout or something like that. It's really nothing that I have to do. The site just kind of runs right now. Obviously, it's good to push out more stuff and keep things fresh. So that's a great opportunity for anybody who's going to take it over. But in terms of just day to day, you don't need to do anything. Got it. Well, it sounds like this for a business owner who does want to just let the business run. It sounds like this is a possibility given it sounds like it's in an evergreen nation. The content holds up well. So what skills will the new owner need in order to be successful with this business? Good question. I assume most people who are you know, browsing for websites to buy, they probably are familiar with the content marketing like type of site, the content driven one that makes money off of ads. This one obviously has affiliate offers too. So, you know, pretty run of the mill stuff. There aren't a lot of technical skills, at least in terms of affiliate and display ad sites that people need to know, but there's some soft skills, obviously being able to write compelling copy or hire people who can, that kind of comes off as a little bit, I don't want to say salesy, but it leads them to your desired outcome. You know, that's obviously a great skill to have. I do want to take a caveat there, though, that I do think one of the things that I have learned, I guess, touching on a prior question is that it's really good to just be honest with people. A lot of sites, especially in the affiliate niches, they'll try to be overly promotional and almost like used car salesman which it's disingenuous. It doesn't make you look good. And I think it hurts your brand and conversion rates and everything overall. But anyway, being able to like lead the customer through a journey is obviously great. But that said, I think search intent as well, which we touched a little bit about my failed business directory listings thing is understanding what people are searching for when they type in a query. So are you providing them with the info that they need? But on the niche specific side, coffee is actually very fascinating. If you are a big coffee fan that's you know you've probably heard well, whether you aren't you've probably heard the term coffee snob and that's because there's kind of like like a science to coffee which is one of the reasons i was really drawn to it if you don't know the science of coffee or like really aren't good at the sciencey side of anything you can still do enough to get by and actually even thrive the way i've got everything set up but if you really want to like take a little bit of time and understand sort of like why water temperature is important or why the grind size, like really fine or a little more coarse, why that stuff's important. That can be a learning curve for some people, but I really think it adds to the quality of content and helps more with that, you know, trust and authority and stuff that, again, has cascading effects, both for picking up organic links from other sites when you're a recognized expert, as well as convincing people to trust you and keep reading your stuff, which is great for your bottom line. Yeah, I definitely agree. And I think the approach of not coming off as salesy, it's refreshing. It seems like that might be, I'm seeing this kind of trend as well with YouTube channels, like in the business space, people coming a little bit less polished, but more real. And yeah, I definitely see that the audience reacts well to that. And to your point yeah, about coffee. Oh, no. Well, I was going to elaborate on that too, is I think one of the great things about the coffee niche is that a lot of the products you promote, there's some big expensive items like thousand, two thousand or more dollar espresso machines, people who are preparing to buy through your affiliate link for those kinds of you know products in that price range, they're not going to do it if it just sounds like you're just, you know, spamming them stuff that may or may not be right just to get them to click on it. So there is sort of a trust and a relationship that is important to develop. I think especially with not just high priced items, but in this particular industry, like people get, like I said, they get snobby about their coffee. And when people like make good espresso, if they're buying, you know, an expensive espresso machine, like they're doing it. I mean, they like it a lot of them, but some people just do it for pride and stuff too, to say that they can. So just kind of like people invest their identity for some people in their coffee. So, you know, really being able to communicate with them and to see why it's more than just caffeine, I think is a big reason why, you know, I've been successful here. Yeah, I'm definitely not a coffee snob, but this month I just started 
making drip coffee every day as opposed to, is that right? Drip coffee as opposed to using the coffee maker. And I don't think I can go back. And I get it <laughs> with the size. Are of you right? doing the thing where you like pour it over with like the pour over, right? Yeah. The gooseneck kettle. Yeah, man. Yes. It takes time and effort. There's a science to the temperature, the direction, mm-hmm. the flow rate, like all this stuff. Then you have to start getting into where you source your beans from. And I'm getting completely off topic because I have gotten <laughs> so immersed in coffee. <laughs> yeah, I completely understand. And I guess I got the taste of it a little bit so I can see myself going further down this rabbit hole of eventually becoming that coffee snob uh, hopefully yeah welcome to the dark roast side <laughs> yes i'm all about the dark roast right now thought i was more of an ethiopia fan but more into oh, the dark roast that's my number one favorite yeah yeah well we can talk about that later we'll get back <laughs> on topic here all right so let's see talking about you mentioned a little bit about So we talked about how this is a low maintenance site, but there are opportunities for growth. So if you were to keep the business, what are some ways you would try to grow it? I think number one, which is probably the same for most sites out there is backlinks. But I think with this one in particular, I have never really invested a ton of time and effort into backlinks because I just haven't had to. This site does extremely well for its backlink profile. And I think anybody who's willing to invest a little bit of time and effort into building, you know, I don't know, just 20, 50, something like good backlinks, I think they're going to see just unbelievable returns on it. It's somewhere that I have not put my time. Therefore, it's a complete greenfield for this site, in my opinion. Second thing I would focus on is uh, product reviews, especially for those high priced espresso machines. I have learned through my research that the revenue per visitor for like $500 to $2,000 espresso machine is more than like a cured coffee maker. So I would invest my time there. There's also an opportunity to apply for the Ad Thrive display ad network. Currently, this site uses Mediavine. This site's right on the borderline of being approved for Ad Thrive based on traffic. And from everything that I've read, you can get a nice 15% or more boost in your RPM, your ad revenue, you know, per thousand sessions or so by switching to ad thrive you'd have to work with them to determine an exact amount but i believe it should be more and then just a couple more things improving the schema markup on the site so adding features to the serps like uh, faq for pages and stuff really help the way the search results appear for the site and increase your click-through rates as well as monitoring the google search console for published pages that have valuable keywords kind of at the bottom of page one or on page two there's a lot of opportunity there to do some optimization without to see more gains without having to actually publish new content. And I will throw in one last home run one. If somebody out there is feeling motivated and caffeinated, there's a big opportunity, I believe, to translate the site into other languages like German and whatnot, or maybe some of those other European markets to take advantage of other Amazon marketplaces, the European versions of them. You know, coffee is big in America, but it's big kind of in that single serve, like Keurig type thing. If you want to really talk about people who love their coffee, especially some of those high priced espresso machines, it's a lot of those European markets. And I think from some of my preliminary research, Germany is a huge greenfield. So if you're feeling, you know, motivated, there's an opportunity to experiment with some of those href lang attributes and really target some other geographies. Nice. That's awesome. Certainly sounds like there are a lot of opportunities for growth here. And yeah, I think it sounds like a very solid foundation to potentially build towards that. Very cool. Of course, with opportunities, there's always risks. So what do you think are the biggest risks with this business that a buyer should be aware of? I think the biggest risk is that the coffee niche is competitive. You know, the site does the majority of its revenue through Amazon Associates and Kitchen Products has a healthy referral or a fee earned through Amazon Associates that despite them lowering it on some occasions, they always raise it again because coffee is competitive and Amazon does need to compete and its kitchen products are the number one selling category by revenue on Amazon. So there's just a lot of sites out there that are going to try to come and take your lunch. This site has a good footing. It's been established for five years. Like I said, I don't do a ton with it and it's still growing. So you can kind of use your weight to bat away any of the really small sites, but you never know when there's another competitor coming. So you do have to stay on your toes. And additionally, because of the competitiveness of coffee, I have had a couple negative SEO attacks. Uh, Basically, somebody will like 
hire somebody off of like Fiverr or whatever to spam my site with a bunch of links like the .ru links or something like that. Maybe every six to 12 months, I'll update my disavow file and you know just keep an eye on my backlink profile just so it doesn't look uh, too scammy or over-optimized or something like that. But that's basically it. So the biggest risk I just think is how competitive the niche can be. Got it. Yeah. And it sounds like that's something that for any site that has a level of success, that's something that you're going to have to be They'll concerned be with. for you, right? Yeah. You're going to have haters. It's a fact of life. All right. So a few housekeeping questions to wrap this up. How much support are you willing to offer buyers? I'm willing to go pretty much above and beyond. This site, like you mentioned at the outset, is built on uh, Webflow and not WordPress. That may be foreign to a lot of people. Some listening probably have never heard of Webflow. Those who have may not have ever used it. So there's a little bit of a learning curve there. But honestly, it's not that big at all. I would offer to anybody who purchased the site, aside from like typical 30 days of phone and email support, I'm happy to offer one hour like Skype sessions to kind of do video shares or something like that to walk you through whatever, as well as, and I think this is the real piece de resistance, is a full documentation, kind of like a PDF I'll complete for you of everything behind the scenes on this site, how I handle my products, where I get my links, where I put links, how the pages are set up in terms of like the layout and whatnot. If you unlock the listing and actually get the URL or the domain for the site, you check it out, you'll see my product reviews are very nice looking with ratings and all this other kind of templatized stuff. It can be daunting, I'm sure, to some who are listening and, you know, maybe just want your typical like blank page WordPress type thing. But for anybody who's like really gung-ho about this, I can't recommend Webflow enough and I'll make sure I document everything. So it's, you know, super easy for you to take over and run it as if you were me. Nice. Yeah, that's really helpful, especially since this is on Webflow. And I think I've heard of a few businesses on Wordflow and they all have positive reviews about it. It's just not as common as WordPress. So yeah, I think this will be very helpful to get that support. All right, let's see. Next question. Would you commit to a non-compete on this business after it's sold? Yes, I absolutely would. Okay, great. And are you open to something like an earnout? Yeah, definitely. For anybody who feels like this is the right fit for them, it's important for me to, you know, hand over the site to somebody who's going to take it and run with it. So I'm definitely open to negotiating and we find something that works for everybody. Okay, perfect. And putting yourself in the shoes of a buyer, why do you think this is a business worth buying? I will say I'm kind of one of those regretful slash hesitant sellers. I think it's worth buying and I don't even want to sell it. But put bluntly, <laughs> if my wife and I weren't buying a house, I probably just wouldn't be. I've put barely any time in the site over the last year. It's still earning like crazy. I think from November, December and January of this past year, the site did something like almost $40,000 in profit just those three months alone. So wow. it's already earning like crazy. And the potential for anybody who's going to like invest some time and effort into backlinks. Like I said, I probably put like two hours into the site over the last like six months. Like that's less than like a football game or something like that. And imagine if I had been doing this like, well, I don't have to imagine I have done it. But if you were working on this thing part or full time or something, just the sky is the absolute limit. And while I'm hesitant to obviously make forecasts or projections, you know, the industry leaders in this niche do I think like five to 10 times what this site does. And this site is already content wise, I believe one of the two to three best in the, in the entire niche. So yeah, the sky is the limit for anybody who's ready to take it and run with it. So yeah, that's why I think it's worth buying. Awesome. Well, I think we've definitely covered a lot here, but is there anything you'd like to add that you think I might've missed during the interview? No, I don't think so. You were a very great interviewer. Well, you were a great interviewee, so thank I you. think this is the perfect point to wrap this up. So yeah, we'll wrap this up here. So Brian, thank you so much for sharing your story and joining us on today's episode. And yeah, I hope your business is purchased in the near future and by the perfect buyer. Thank you very much. And hopefully with the housing market, it'll be enough for my wife and I. Yes, I hope so. All right, everyone. Thanks for listening. To learn more and see if this listing has already been sold, head over to empireflippers.com slash marketplace and search for listing number 62167. And if you're watching this on YouTube, click the link in the description to go straight to the listing. And once you've unlocked this listing, you'll be given everything you need to know about this business. So until next time, enjoy your digital journey.